There are more than 600,000 objects in the asteroid belt between the planets Mars and Jupiter. Most of them are pieces of rock, comets, and asteroids of varying size. These objects are held in a band about 6,000 miles wide by the gravity of Mars and Jupiter. The largest objects within the asteroid belt are Ceres and Vesta. Vesta is a rather misshapen asteroid, and the rounder Ceres is officially a dwarf planet. Both objects are of great interest to astronomers because they are thought to have existed since the birth of the solar system. In 2007, NASA sent a probe to the two objects. In this video, you'll learn what this probe found in the asteroid belt. But before we take a closer look at what Dawn was able to discover on its three-year mission, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel, activate the notification bell, and give us a like if you enjoy the video. NASA's Dawn Mission The journey of Dawn began in September 2007 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The destination was the section of our solar system that astronomers sometimes jokingly call the rumpus room of the planetary system. The asteroid belt is thought to be where all the objects left over from the formation of the Sun and planets orbit. The asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is not the only such rumpus room in our solar system. At the very edge, where hardly any sunlight reaches, far more of these misshapen rocks, minor planets, asteroids, and comets orbit our Sun in the Kuiper Belt. The icy or rocky objects in the asteroid belt have hardly changed since the early days of the solar system. This makes them valuable witnesses for science of a time that goes back about 5 billion years. Vesta and Ceres also provide exciting clues as to why certain objects form planets and others do not. NASA named its probe Dawn to emphasize its research goals, which go back to the dawn of the solar system. Practically, we still know very little about that time. Our scientists can now simulate fairly accurately how suns are born from clouds of dust and gas thanks to highly advanced computer technology, but many questions still remain unanswered. Suns are born in increasingly rotating dust disks. After the process, enough matter remains to form planets. However, these processes also leave rocky debris, dust clouds, and small bodies. These are exactly the objects that remain today in the asteroid belt and in the Kuiper belt. Ceres and Vesta are probably among the oldest objects in the solar system. Dawn's mission goal was to find out more about the composition surface features, and formation of both celestial bodies. In addition, researchers have long suspected that Ceres contains water and possibly even organic substances. These could be the basic building blocks for life. Dawn's Visit to Vesta In 2011, Dawn reached the asteroid belt after a nearly four-year journey. The first target was the somewhat misshapen Vesta. At 329 miles in diameter, Vesta is a very large asteroid, but it's still a rather small object by planetary standards. Vesta has just 9% of Earth's mass. Unlike Ceres, Vesta's own weight was not sufficient to bring the celestial body into so-called hydrostatic equilibrium. This is necessary to form the round shape that planets or even our Sun have. Based on numerous simulations of the formation history of our planets, researchers were able to find out that Vesta lost a larger amount of its own mass to its neighbor Jupiter more than one billion years ago due to a collision or a comet impact. So Jupiter's luck was Vesta's sorrow, because Jupiter was able to become the largest planet in the system, and Vesta remained an asteroid. At first sight, Vesta looks like a flattened ball. It probably originally had a somewhat rounder form and or was rounder before the large collisions on the way to become a small planet. The surface of the asteroid still allows conclusions about two big collisions, where Vesta probably collided with other planets, which were not yet on fixed orbits. These impacts were so violent that Vesta's entire surface burst open and material was ejected into space. At that time, Vesta may also have possessed a liquid iron core. To this day, numerous rock fragments are detectable that originated from these impacts. Researchers can say this so exactly because these lumps show precisely the structure composition of Vesta. 
Small asteroids of this kind are called V-type asteroids by astronomers. The V in this case stands for their origin, Vesta. Some of these small V-type asteroids have even landed on Earth. These extraterrestrial visitors are called Howardite, Eucrite, Diogenite, Meteorites, or also briefly as Head Meteorites, which reflects their composition. So Vesta has made it very easy for us to study rock composition, delivering samples practically to the doorstep of terrestrial scientists. When Vesta was first examined very closely thanks to Dawn, a large bump immediately stood out. Although Vesta is so small, this mountain was able to enjoy the title of the second highest mountain in the solar system. Immediately after its discovery, the central mountain in the middle of the Rhea Silvia crater shares this title with Olympus Mons on Mars, which is also 13 miles high. The largest mountain currently known is Maxwell Montes on Venus at 15 miles. Vesta has another interesting feature in common with Mars. The environment of the Marcia crater has an unusual perforated structure, so far discovered on Mars. Scientists believe that it's a hydrated mineral rock that has been heated extremely quickly, releasing water. The cause could have been another impact. The Marcia crater, together with Calpurnia and Minuccio craters, forms Vesta's famous snowman. So all in all, these findings and images testify to a very eventful past for the asteroid. For astronomers on Earth, Vesta is something of a rocky protoplanet. In other words, the asteroid could be described as a planetary embryo that has stopped in its evolution. Don's visit to Vesta was a complete success for scientists. They were able to collect all the data about the asteroid Vesta that they had hoped for at the beginning of the mission. Ceres, the exceptional asteroid. On March 6, 2015, the Dawn spacecraft entered orbit around Ceres. Ceres is classified by international astronomers as both an asteroid and a dwarf planet. Its mean equatorial diameter of 599 miles is almost twice that of Vesta, and Ceres' mass has been sufficient for it to form a spherical shape under the force of its own gravity. Ceres is not only much larger than all other objects in its neighborhood, it also does not really fit into the asteroid belt in terms of structure and surface texture. This, the smallest of planets, is everything but a dead rock lump. Rather, this celestial body resembles the geologically very active rock modes of Jupiter and Saturn. Ceres probably has a solid core of nickel and iron and a thin dust crust. Inside the planet, researchers have long suspected larger water deposits, and Don was able to confirm this assumption. Where volcanism occurs, there is usually strong geological activity, gases, and heat. However, researchers could not find out more about this before the Dawn mission. Although we had long had very good space telescopes like Hubble, the best image scientists had of Ceres looked very fuzzy and blurry. Consequently, there was great joy among astronomers when this interesting celestial body first took shape on NASA's screens. Even the first high-resolution images revealed exciting details, such as craters and strange bright white spots. The most prominent and largest of these spots is in the center of a crater. Ceres has also probably been hit several times in the past by other asteroids and comets. But the mysterious white spots did not appear to be traces of impacts. Soon the researchers established that this fascinating phenomenon is an ice volcano. With a maximum age of 240 million years, the Ahuna Mons ice volcano is still relatively young. In a course of the further mission, the researchers could find traces of 22 further, smaller ice volcanoes. Presumably, New ice volcanoes form on Ceres every few million years. In cryovolcanism, the volcano spews a vicious ice water mixture instead of hot magma. For volcanism to occur at all, tidal forces must be at play. But there are supposedly no tidal forces on Ceres. So far, it's unclear which forces are responsible for the volcanism. The fact alone that Ceres is an ice world amazes the researchers. Actually, these manifestations have been observed so far only on moons from Jupiter and on objects in the Kuiper Belt. On Ceres, salts could lower the freezing point of water to the point that there are cryomagmatic liquids instead of liquid water, despite its proximity to the sun. Researchers naturally want to know if there are major deposits of liquid water beneath Ceres' surface. Since the dwarf planet has a very low density overall, water could make up as much as 50% of the total volume. 
Currently, another mission is being planned to study Ceres in even greater detail. A lander is planned that will examine Ceres' surface more closely and perhaps even drill into it in the not-too-distant future. If the scientists' assumptions are correct, there should be large amounts of free water or muddy substances just below the thin dust crust. At best, researchers could even find bacteria or simple life forms such as algae in these water deposits. Dawn continues to orbit Ceres. In 2018, the Dawn mission officially came to an end. When the spacecraft ran out of fuel after many successful years, it had completed 51,385 hours of operations, captured more than 100,000 images, collected 172 gigabytes of data, and traveled almost 2.7 billion miles. Dawn was not crashed over Ceres at the end of its service life, as is usually the case. The spacecraft is still orbiting Ceres in a safe orbit today, and it should stay that way. Scientists want to avoid introducing bacteria or microbes from Earth to Ceres with Dawn. The new probe, whose launch has not yet been determined, is being built under the highest hygienic safety precautions. When it lands on the organic world Ceres, not a single terrestrial germ should adhere to it. So we can look forward to seeing how the exploration of this dwarf planet will continue. To close the video, tell us what you think about this mission. Did you even know that there is another planet between Mars and Jupiter? And did you know that it's considered a promising candidate for the discovery of life beyond Earth? As always, we welcome your input and discussion on the topic in the comments. Until next time, on Simply Space.